risen indeed. Hallelujah. Rejoice and be glad, glad in it. Christ has risen from the dead. Alleluia. God, God the, the Father, Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light. Grant that we who have been raised with him may abide in his presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This morning because we are unable to have communion with one another, uh, in lieu of that liturgy, we are going to be celebrating an ancient, ancient liturgy. Uh, portions of the service of Vigil of Easter that is normally uh, celebrated on Saturday night. We won't do all the readings, but it's a series of 10 readings and 10 psalms. We will be doing a portion of that this morning to truly celebrate the joy that is Easter. And uh, throughout all of these readings, then, from the Old Testament, you may remain seated. The first reading is from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth, earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse, and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the livestock according to their kinds and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. 
So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it, God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your word and spirit, you most wonderfully created all things. And through the word made flesh, you brought new life to fallen humanity. Grant that in your mercy we may be conformed to the image of him who shares fully in our humanity, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The next reading is from the book of Genesis. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and his mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the heavens, also male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth, Forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made, I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day Noah and his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them entered the ark, and they and every beast according to its kind, and all the livestock according to their kinds, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh in which there was the breath of life. And those who entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days on the earth. The waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. 
the waters prevailed and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. At the end of the forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent forth a raven. It went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set her foot, and she returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took her and brought her into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and behold, in her mouth was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent forth the dove, and she did not return to him any more. In the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth had dried out. Then God said to Noah, Go out from the ark, you and your wife, and your sons, and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, that they may swarm on the earth, and be fruitful, and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out, and his sons and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. Then God said to Noah, and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. It is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Let us pray. O Lord, you kill and you raise to life. You brought the flood upon a wicked and perverse generation. And yet you saved faithful Noah and his family in the ark. Keep us in safety in the ark of Christ's body, the church, that your mercy may come to its fullness, and your salvation may be preached to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The next reading is also from the book of Genesis, the testing of Abraham. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son, Isaac. 
And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son, and he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went, both of them, together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father! And he said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham! And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, The Lord Will Provide, as it is said to this day, On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <clears throat> Let us pray. O God, since you promised faithful Abraham that he would be the father of a great multitude, you provided a substitute for his son, Isaac. In the fullness of time, you sent your son, the lamb who takes away the sin of the world, to lay down his life that we might live as faithful children of Abraham. Grant to all people a living trust in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. next reading is from the book of Exodus, Israel's deliverance at the Red Sea. When Pharaoh drew near, the, Lord, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is it not is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of God who was going before the host of Israel moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. 
And there was the cloud and the darkness, and it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning, in the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, and the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord. For he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> Let us pray. O God, you once delivered your people Israel from bondage under Pharaoh and led them by a pillar of cloud and fire through the sea to safety. Grant that we may so follow Christ that through the waters of baptism, we may daily die and rise with him and walk in safety through the wilderness of this life until we see your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The next reading is from the book of Ezekiel, the Valley of Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, 
Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are in the end of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, your Son came as the Son of Man to breathe his word and spirit upon the dry dead bones of Adam's children. Grant that we may hear your holy word, receive your spirit, and rise each day from the death of sin to live in newness of life before you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. next reading is from the book of Jonah. Jonah preaches to Nineveh. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in the breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. The word reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he issued a proclamation and published through Nineveh, by the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything, let them feed not or drink water, But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and let them call out mightily to God. Let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who who knows? God may turn and relent and turn from his fierce anger, so that we may not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, as the prophet Jonah spent three days in the belly of the great fish, so your son Jesus spent three days in the heart of the earth. Grant us repentance to embrace our death in him through baptism and to proclaim his victory over sin and death to all the world. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The final reading is from the book of Daniel the fiery furnace. 
King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its breadth 6 cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent to gather the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all of the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all of the officials of the provinces gathered for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. They declared to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, to fall down and worship the image that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury, and the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was usually heated. And he ordered some of the mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. Because the king's order was urgent and the furnace overheated, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? And they answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said, But I see four men, unbound, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the burning, fiery furnace. He declared, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. And the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed, their cloaks were not harmed, and no smell of fire had come upon them. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him and set aside the king's command 
and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree, any people, nation, or language that speaks anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb, and their houses laid in ruins, for there is no other god who is able to rescue in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Let us pray. O God, your son protected faithful Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace of the king. Grant us protection in our time of testing that we would boldly confess your name, reject all false worship, and live and die in confidence, knowing that we are safe in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Would you please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and we sing our hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Oh, what sweet words to say. We have waited in isolation to sing alleluias. We have hoped to speak the words to each other. He is risen. And that day is here. It's here. And yet the joy is not complete, for we are not complete as a family amongst one another. The disciples were not complete. Judas was dead. Peter and John had left to see an empty tomb. They were coming and going early that Sunday morning. They were isolated together in their room behind locked doors and windows. They were together in kind of a strange way, but yet they were apart, lost in a sea of their own emotions, lost in their sins that hung in front of their eyes like frontlets, betrayal, cowardice, self-preservation. No doubt they wished to sing alleluias as well, but they could not. Huddled together in fear, I can't help but think of a game that we play for lock-ins with the youth here at this congregation. It is absolutely one of their favorite games to play, sardines. Perhaps some of you have heard of it. Most of you are probably not. Sardines is the opposite of hide and seek. One person hides, and then everyone looks for that person. Now that's the same, I think, as hide and seek, but here's where it gets different. When you find that one person who is hiding, instead of telling everyone else, you hide with them. And everyone continues to do this until everyone has found the one person and they're all crowded inside of a closet uh, or my favorite, underneath the pews in the the, uh, uh, choir loft. Uh, Sometimes they'll try to all get into the sacristy closet uh, up here or sometimes closets downstairs. It's so much fun. It's like those old 50s era things when they try to cram 30 or 40 people into a telephone booth. Yeah? It is hilarious, and the tighter it gets, and the closer they are in proximity to one another, the more there is infectious laughter and the inability to be quiet. Inevitably, though, when we play sardines, we usually start at 10 o'clock, we'll, and the kids love this game, and it, it always drives me crazy, because I want to play like two or three rounds, and they end up playing like 15, 16 rounds of sardines, and I just get... T- bored with it after a while, but they love it. Inevitably, some enterprising young youth, usually, uh, well, some enterprise, it it doesn't matter, it could be a boy or a girl, they uh, they want to change the nature of the game. They want to find a hiding spot so difficult that no one ever finds them. They want to prove how smart and how good they are at hiding, and I keep trying to tell the kids that's not the point of the game. The point of the game is to find a really easy place to hide that's really tight and to see how many people you can cram into one small little space uh, in the church. And I have to admit, Kathy, now that I see it back there, we have at times tried to hide behind the organ too. But yes, I know it's not good. Pastor Chain's probably turning and is rolling around in his, in his chair right now. This, this, uh, the fun part is trying to squeeze 15 youth into a small space that can't fit them. That's where the laughter is. But that one enterprising youth decides, no, it's the opposite. After a while, what happens is no one can find the person. I once had one of my youth, what they did is they went into the bathroom and they laid on top of the stall, the, the walls of the stall, you see. And we put, by the way, I should say, we play, hard, we play sardines in the dark. So you have to kind of feel around and grope around for people. You can't necessarily see them. So he laid on top of, like he planked on top of the bathroom stall so no one could find him. And after a a long time of, of, of trying to find him, all the kids got bored and they gave up and they came back to the starting place. And then lo and behold, we could hear off in the distance someone yelling, I'm still right here. 
it's probably something we could all say right now. Wanting to be in church on this most glorious day. Wanting to wake up and for things to be different in our lives. And all we can muster is, I'm still right here. Dealing with our children, teaching them as we never thought we would, I'm still right here. Staying at home, never dining out, never seeing anyone in person, uh, hoping to just wave at loved ones through a window. I don't know about you, but I've become so crazy. I'll wave at everybody on the street who's out walking their dogs, and they all look back at me. I'm just, and they're all looking back and like, who's that crazy guy in the car? I'm desperate for human interaction. And all I can say is, I'm still right here. Perhaps it's crowded where you live. Perhaps you've never thought you'd have 10 or more people in one house underfoot all the time. Perhaps due to the closeness and the captivity, you're waking up and screaming every day, I'm still right here! Maybe it's more. Struggling with disease, sickness, cancer. Does death walk the halls of your home? Do you see the specter on the horizon often and wonder, I'm still right here. The disciples had been with Jesus for three years, give or take. They had learned much. They had seen the gospel with their own eyes on many occasions. They had hopes. They had dreams. Can you imagine seeing the miraculous things that Jesus did and thinking everything's rolling downhill. We're going to be lords and ladies. We're going to be important people in the kingdom when Jesus takes over and takes all the power back. And now back together in a locked room. But without Jesus, with all those hopes and dreams dashed, perhaps they thought they were back where they started. They had to go back to their old jobs, fishing for fish, <laughs> collecting taxes. They were stuck back at the beginning after all that work and time and study with Jesus. I'm still right here. What can change this reality? What can make all things new? An angel tells us an answer to the question that matters. The only question that matters this whole Easter celebration morning. Is Jesus still right there? Right where we left him? Cold as stone, dead as clay? Does death still have sway over him? Is he who he said he was? Will he do what he said he would do? The angel says, He is not here, for he has risen. As he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Right where we expected him to be, where all our human hopes and dreams die. The tomb we thought would be filled with death, well, it's empty. And the place where he was, where he was, unlike all the rest of us who sees, who, who, who sees through clenched teeth, I'm still right here for us sinners wishing to see the Father's grace, wishing to see hope and joy. There is no greater gift than an empty tomb and the statement, He is not here, for He has risen. I know that many of you are feeling frustrated. The days go on and they begin to meld together. Perhaps you wake and look in the mirror and the thought of another day in the same old house doing the same old things is driving you crazy. Perhaps you look in that mirror and think with anger, I'm still right here. Days are coming. Days are coming. We heard of the story of salvation from the beginning of time until Jesus. I hope you enjoyed all these stories and how each one of them with that prayer shows us truths about Jesus. 
the story of salvation is about Christ and his coming into the world to save us, but we are also part of that story. Along with all the Old Testament stories that came before us, the stories of Jesus that came before us, we are right smack dab in the middle of this ongoing story of salvation. Game of sardines. We will all cram into this place and laugh and cry and speak words of encouragement to one another. We will come to this place to hide our very souls with Jesus. As Colossians says, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. We will gather together around our Savior Jesus Christ who will be offered to us in richness in his body and his blood on this altar. There is more. There is so much more. Never forget that on that last day, the day of Christ's triumphant return, he will come in might and glory and he will stand on this battlefield earth Perhaps he will stay. I'm still right here. Like his resurrection on the third day, we, we will come out of our graves to live with him in eternal blessedness and righteousness. And forevermore, we will be there. We will always be there. In a perfect new heavens and a new earth free from disease and sorrow, from persecution and despair. It will be a place of joy and singing and closeness and worship forever. Where Jesus will be, where we will see him face to face, and we will mutter to ourselves, maybe unable to believe it, with joy every day. I am still He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. This morning, in lieu of the sacrament, we will remember the sacrament of our baptisms. Today we will express our creed as we did when we were baptized. And we will make answer and give a confident response as to what we believe about Jesus Christ. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, Yes, I I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, Yes, I I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, Yes, I I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, Yes, I I believe. believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, Yes, I I believe. believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, Yes, I I believe. believe. The Lord bless and preserve your faith this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. O risen Savior, set free our tongues to confess your resurrection before a world still captive to sin and death. Give us courage to go to every place and to speak in every language the salvation won for us on the cross and the hope granted to us of life that death cannot overcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. prayer. O risen Savior, make us to burn with the fire of your love that we may love you above all things and love our neighbors as ourselves. Deliver us from fear and relieve the anxiety of our hearts, that we may live out fully the hope planted within us and the new lives we received in the waters of our baptism. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. O risen Savior, anoint the words of those who preach to us your gospel, and open our ears to hear with faith all that he has done to save us. Raise up many who will serve you in the various callings of your church, and who will serve us in your name with your word and gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of Donald, our president, Christy, our governor, the Congress of the United States, and all state and local elected officials. Guide them according to your word that their labors for our nation's health and welfare may not be in vain, nor forgetful of the vulnerable, the aging, and the unemployed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, across our nation so many are imprisoned. Bless all prison workers that they may be humane and serve with integrity. Bless those incarcerated with the hope of the, for the future and amendment of life. Help them to serve their sentences with patience and trust in you. And bless their families who love them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of those who cry to you in any need, especially the sick, the suffering, the disabled, the wounded in spirit, those who suffer mental illness, and those in their last days on earth. Lord, especially remember those uh, Janet, Mary, Lonnie, Henry, Larry, Esther, Marge, Lois, Jeannie, Dorothy, Marilyn, Jody, Dennis, Mary, Lorraine, Bob, Miranda, and Dawn. We also remember Madeline, Robin, Anne, Vanita, Colby, Ashlyn, Kathy, uh, Joanne, Linda, Shirley, Belinda, Sylvia, Travis, Rita, Tom, Andy, Matt, Logan, Jeffrey, Tina, Beverly, Dawn, Sonia, Jody, Kathy, Angela, and Doug. We pray for the families who mourn at this time as well, Lord. We pray for the families of Marty Gebauer, or the family of Oliver Boehner, and the family of Evelyn Wenzel, Barb Peterson's mother. Uh, We we pray that they may be given hope hope in resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, in the midst of their mourning. Lord, give them grace according to their need and sustain them in their afflictions to the day when their sufferings will be exchanged for the glory in the life to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. O risen Savior, accept the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving from our lips and the tithes and offerings we bring this day. Increase in the hearts of your people, delight in your mercy, gratitude for all your benefits, and eagerness to support the mission of your church in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. O risen Savior, we ask that you would put a protective hedge around all of our medical professionals, doctors, nurses, orderlies, those who work in the custodial staff, uh, and those people who support the work of a hospital. Lord, we pray for truckers, for our garbage men, for the people in society who stock our shelves, who sell us our goods, for those who work in restaurants, for those who provide us with the things that we need, who put themselves at risk daily, being out there in the world, continuing their most necessary tasks. Lord, we remember and ask that you watch over our policemen, our firefighters, and also our EMTs who watch over us as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. prayer. All praise to you, dear Father in heaven, for you have opened up to us the way to eternal life, in the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for all those who have gone before us in the faith and now rest from their labors. Keep us in that same faith and embolden us by your resurrection to be fearless in the face of disease, chaos, loneliness, and every sorrow of this world. Give us with Job the solemn expectation to cheer us our redeemed lives, and we too shall be resurrected and glorified to live with him in his eternal kingdom through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our resurrected Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
we pray as our resurrected Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you all. Amen. He is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Well, a hearty, hearty welcome, all of you people loved by God. He is risen. He is, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. So glad to be with you on this Easter morn. And just the one thing I wanted to remind you of was don't forget that at 10.30 a.m. we will have a drive-in service in the parking lot at Our Redeemer Lutheran. So just in a few moments, uh, we would ask for you to join us uh, over at Our Redeemer Lutheran. Uh, uh, and we'll be singing hymns and reading readings and uh, a short homily, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and my wife has dared me to stand on the roof for all of you so you can all see me. So you can't miss that. Uh, the Lord's mm -hmm. blessings be upon you as we continue his kingdom work in his kingdom field. I just can't help but say I want to thank so many people who made this happen, spent just countless hours working these things out. Kathy Luth has uh, played all of the services for the last few weeks. Uh, Seth has spent uh, just a ton of time helping me record services. And now Matt Nussbaum, Tim Eden, Chrissy Eden, Janelle friends, and Michael friends have also uh, helped us greatly today to make your Easter service a blessing. I'm so thankful for their help and for the help of many others, including Stephanie and uh, in the office and all sorts of people who have been helping behind the scenes, making phone calls, uh, greeting people, uh, and doing what they can. It's a crazy time, but I'm thankful for my church family who have made it much, much better. I love you all very much. There's not a thing you can do about it. The Lord's blessings to all of you.